We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Vav Amid Aleph from Masechas Bavakama. This is Bavakama Daf 76a. And the previous summer, the Gemara was doing a brisa which brought the sheet of the opinion of Sumchis. And the brisa had said that you have a case of Adam Zoman to testify that somebody stole. And so the Adam Zoman had to pay Kefel. And the problem is, why did they have to pay Kefel? Because the way the Gemara explained the brisa was the person actually admitted that he stole. And so certainly he himself would have to pay the Karen. So maybe they have to pay the extra payment, but they shouldn't have to pay the entire Kefel, including the Karen. And the Gemara says that is correct. Really, the way the brisa should read is Tashlam the Kefel is the double payment part not the entire double payment because they are not responsible for the Karen. They are not responsible for the principal. And Rashi says, Tashlum de Kefel Meshalman Esa Kefel, meaning they pay that double portion. Vahum Meshalim Shlosha Levad HaKaren. And then he pays three times the amount besides for the Karen, which he pays. They do not have to pay the Karen. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Gonav Vehikdash, if the person stole and then he made the animal Hekdash, Viachakach Tavachu Machar, and then he slaughtered or he sold the animal. So in that case, he's not going to be Chay of the Dalit Vehe. And the Gemara says, Amri, they said, I understand on the slaughtering of the animal after he's makdash the animal, he's not going to be chayiv. Because what he's slaughtering is an animal that belongs to hekdash. He's not slaughtering the animal that belongs to the original owner anymore. But on the fact that he made it hekdash alone, that act alone, he should be chayiv to pay dalit vehe. Because mali machru lahedyot, mali machru lashamayim. What's the difference if he sells it to another person? What's the difference if he sells it to the heavens, meaning to say, if he makes it hectic, he's giving it over to another rishus, that should be the equivalent of mechira, and he should be chayav dalit vehe just for that. And the Gemara says, Hamani Rabbi Shimon, who's the author of Mishnah, it's Rabbi Shimon. The Yomar Kachim Shechayib Achroyusim, because Rabbi Shimon says, if you have Kachim, if you have, let's say, a carbon, but the owner is responsible, if something should happen to the animal, he has to bring another animal. He has responsibility, he has Achrayis, Bereshusay Demare Kaimi, that's considered still to be in the rishus of the original owner. And Rashi explains, Ki katavach de hekdash katavach, whatever he's slaughtering is in the Rishus of hekdash. Deha bila achar yush kaimin. And Rashi explains, we're talking here after the original owner gave up hope. The ilif ne yush, because if we're talking before the original owner gave up hope, lo kitsha wouldn't be hekdash at all. The kaven da yayish, now once the, the original owner gave up hope, kanya hekdash be yush vishina rishus. So then hekdash actually is konet with the combination of yush and shina rishus. Hilgach lav demari katavach, therefore what he's slaughtering is, does not belong to the original animal, to the original owner, rather. But then the question is, isn't that itself considered to be like a mechira? And the Gemara says, Rabbi Shimon, the Gemara says, the Mishnah files Rabbi Shimon, Uchagon Sha'amar Hare Olai Ola, the case is where he says, I have upon myself a responsibility to bring a carbonola. Vehifresh Geneva Zula Nidro. And then this Ganav, he separates this animal that he stole for to, as a fulfillment of his neder. To Kevan de Chayabach So since he's Chayabach Rayas, if something should happen to this animal, he has to bring another animal. Vedavar Agorim Lamaman, and therefore, it's a Dover Hagorim Lamamanu. It's something that causes him to be responsible to pay money. Kimamun Dami, that's like his money. The Lav Mechiri, and the, so therefore it's not considered to be a sale. And so Rashi then notes, if it's not considered to be a sale to Hegdish, says Rashi, umiul inyan tevicha. So what about slaughtering? If it's not considered to be a sale to Hegdish, so why is it considered slaughtering lav demari? Why is he slaughtering an animal of Hegdish? So Rashi says, umiul inyan tevicha potter. Nevertheless, if he slaughters it, it's still enough Hegdish to be potter. The afagav the rishus ganev kaima, even though it's in the rishus of the ganev, dim avdu chayev achrayusam, meaning to say that if it gets lost, so he's chayev and he has achrayus la Hegdish, but still cholalei mia shame Hegdish. It's still called Hegdish. That it's no longer in the rishus of the original owner, and therefore we still say v'lav demara katavach. What he's slaughtering does not belong to the original owner. But the Gemara continues, you can't say that this part of the Mishnah follows Rabbi Shimon because Hamid is safer of Shimon from the fact that the end of the Mishnah is going to be Rabbi Shimon's Shita. Have a racial lav Rabbi Shimon. It comes out that the beginning of the Mishnah, this part of the Mishnah, cannot be Rabbi Shimon. And so the Gemara instead says, El Hachab Mayaskin, and here what are we talking about? We're talking about the Kodshim Kalim. We're talking about Kodshim Kalim. Let's say like a Korban Shlomim is considered like a Kodshim Kalim. The Alibid Rabbi Yossi Haglili, we're following Rabbi Yossi Haglili's opinion. Do Amar Kodshim Kalim Mamun Bailam Hu. Rabbi Yossi Haglili says, Kodshim Kalim really is still considered to be belonging to the original owner over a Shusei Kaimi and it's in his Rishos. And so the Gemara says, Avol Kodshei Kodshim, but if you're saying that we're talking specifically about Kodshei Kalim and not, and not Kodshei Kodshim, so then what would be the Halacha by Kodshei Kodshim? My, what would be the Halacha? Meshalim Tashlumei Dalet V'chamisha. Then apparently you would pay Dalet V'hei, meaning to say if you make it into Kodshim Kalim, the Gemara is saying that's not considered to be a sale because that's considered to be still Bereshusei Kaimi. But that would imply that Kodshei Kodshim is considered to be giving it over entirely to Hektish, and so therefore there would be Dalet V'hei. But if that's the case, Adetani Reisha Gona V'tavach 
So instead of saying in the beginning part of the Mishnah, it said that if he slaughters it before the Hekdish, it says if he steals it and slaughters it and only then makes it Hekdish, so then we say that he pays Dalit Vehei. Why say that distinction? You could have made a distinction within the case itself and say even in a situation where he slaughters it after it's Hekdish, say that's only true by Kachim Kalim. But by Kodshe Kodshim, Meshalim Tashlum Yarbov Chamisha, then there would be a payment of four or five times the amount. And so the Gemara says, Ella, rather you have to say, Liolam Loshna Kodshe Kodshim, Veloshna Kodshim Kalim. It really doesn't matter if it's Kodshe Kodshim or Kodshim Kalim. With the Kasha Loch, and your Kasha originally was Mali Machul Ahed Yer Mali Machul Ashamayim. What difference does it make if he sells it to another person or if he sells it to heaven? The answer to that is Machul Ahed Yer. If a person sells it to another person, May Karatur de Ruvain Vahashta Tur de Shimon. Originally it's the axe of Ruvain's. And then it becomes now it's the axe of Shimon's. But Machru Lashamayim, but when he sells it Lashamayim, may Kara Turu de Ruvain. Originally it's called the axe of Ruvain, Vahashta Torah de Ruvain, and even now it's still called the axe of Ruvain. And Rashi explains, Bekachim Kalim, we're talking about Kachim Kalim, again, the lighter kinds of Karbonos, Sheikh Dishu Lishlamim, that he sanctified it as a Karban Shlamim. The Rabbi Yosi Aglili Beperakam, Rabbi Yosi Aglili Shita, the Kachim Kalim is Mom and Bailim, that's in the first Perak. Hilkach, therefore, says Rashi, Lav Mechiri, when he sanctifies it as Kachim Kalim, that's not called a sale. Umiu, but nevertheless, Mershus Morakamo, Afkinu, Shem Hektish, the fact that it's Hektish is enough that it's not considered in the possession of the original owner. Vachi Katavach, Lav de Katavach, and again, therefore, when he's slaughtering, it, it's not considered that he's slaughtering it in the Rishos of the original owner. Lishan Achrin Rashi says another explanation, B'tvicha, when he slaughters it after he makes it Kachim Kalim, Misham Hachi Lo Mechaev, the reason why he's not Chayev is, Devishas Tvicha De Hektish Ninu, because when he does the slaughtering, it's considered to belong to Hektish, to Yomar B'Parakam, because we say in the first Perak, the Chiyomar Rabbi Yosei Aglili Maman Bailim Mechaev, because Rabbi Yosei Aglili said it's considered to belong to the owner, that's while it's alive. Avaliachar Tvicha Lo, but once it, it's already been slaughtered, it's no longer considered to be Mamun Bailam according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Elami Shulchan Gavoa Kazachu, it's considered that they're eating it from the table of the Almighty. Veloni Hiro Li Barashi says that Pshat doesn't seem correct. The Vachi Hai Shechito Lo Amar Rabbi Yossi Aglili Dimi Shulchan Gavoa Kazachu. Because that's not what Rabbi Yossi Aglili means that when you shecht it already, it's considered Shulchan Gavoa. Ela be Mekadish Bechelko Shechelko Bekachim. Rather, what Rabbi Yossi Aglili is talking about over there is if a person is Mekadish, a woman with his portion, meaning to say he had a certain portion of that carbon. To have a hasam shchita uzrika haktaras chalavim. There it went through the whole process, not just the shchita. There was shchita. There was the zrika, the throwing of the blood. There was the burning the chaylev on the mizbeach. So there we say that's mishulchan gavoa kazachu. It's not considered to be his. Avla b'shas tvicha, but at the time of the tvicha, akati mamun bailam him. It's still considered to be the mamun of the owner. And Rashi says, When he sells it to a regular person, so originally it's the axe of Ruvain, meaning before it's sold, it goes by the Ganav, it's as if the Ganav's shore. And then when he sells it, it's called the Lokeach shore. But when he sells it, so to speak, to heaven, it's still called by the person who was Makdashit. The way we refer to the animal is the Ola of so-and-so. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Rabbi Shimon Omer Vechula, Rabbi Shimon made a distinction between Kachim Shechayeh Bachro Yusun and Kachim that is not Chayeh Bachro Yusun. Now, in the Mishnah, it said that Kachim Shechayeh Bachro Yusun, the person in the Ganav is Chayev, Dalit Vehei. If there's responsibility to bring another animal, if something should happen to this animal, again, that would be a situation where the Ganav would have to pay Dalit Vehei. But if it's Kachim that is not Chayeh Bachro Yusun, then he would be Potter from Dalit Vehei. Now, at this point in time, the Gemara, the Gemara is assuming that Rabbi Shimon's Dalit Vehei is because the person and made it hektish, just like the Gemara had assumed in its question above, that by making it hektish, it's mali machru lehedyut, mali machru lashamayim. It's like he's given it over to another Rishus, and that was machay of the Dalit Vehei. But the Gemara notes, if that is the Pshat, it's actually exactly the opposite of, w- of what it should be. Amri, they say as follows, Nihi desavar Rabbi Shimon, mali machru lehedyut, mali machru lashamayim. Granted that Rabbi Shimon is saying, what's the difference if a person sells it to another person, meaning the Ganav sells it to another person, or if the Ganav sells it, so to speak, lashamayim and makes it hektish, but even even if he's saying that, but if Chami Boilation to be the exact opposite. It should be Kachim Shachai Bachar Yusun Potter. It should be by Kachim Shachai Bachar Yusun, the Ganav should be Potter. That should not be considered transferring it Lashamayim. The Akati Lo Nafak because it still hasn't really left his Rishus, because he's still responsible. But Kachim Sheino Chai Bachar Yusun, but if he made it Hektish in a way where he's no longer responsible if something happens to the animal, so then Chayif, then he should be Chayif Dalit Vehe, the Mafkile Mirashuse, because now it's leaving his Rishus. So therefore, it seems Rav Shimon is saying the exact opposite in terms of making this distinction. And the Gemara says, 
says, Amri, they say, the answer is follows, Rabbi Shimon Amilsa Achrisi Koi. Rabbi Shimon's actually going on something else. Katani, here's what it, it should say in the Mishnah. If a person steals from another Ganev, he doesn't pay the payment of Dalit Vehei. And similarly, if somebody steals Hektish from the house of its owner, Potter, he's also Potter from Dalit Vehei. And what's the reason for this? My time, what's the reason? It says that it has to be stolen from the house of the person of the Ish. But not from the house of Hektish. If you steal from Hektish, there's no Dalit Vehei there. And that's what Rabbi Shimon's making the distinction. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, Kodshim Shechai Bachriyus, and if it's Kodshim, that that person that you stole it from, he's responsible. So Chayif, so in that case, if he's responsible, if something should happen to the animal, he has to bring another animal as Hektish, so then you Chayif Dalit Vehei on such a stealing, because there it's really considered to be with the original owner, he has responsibility. My time, what's the reason? Karina Bey, Vagunav Mi because there we call it that it's stolen from the house of the man. But if it's a hektish where the owner has no responsibility whatsoever, that's considered totally in the Rishos of Hektish. So Potter there is Potter from Dalit Vehei to Lokarin and Bevagun of Mibesoish, because there we don't consider it stolen from the house of the man. And Rashi explains, Amri, they say, Right now the Gemara thinks, Rav Shimon is not being the person chayev for slaughtering the animal. Even if he separated out as a neder, and he has responsibility to bring another animal, should something happen, but still that act of hektish makes it leave the rishos of the original owner. And this person is really a shomer on behalf of hektish. And what he's slaughtering is not, does not not belong to the original owner. And what is Rabbi Shimon saying that the person is Chayev Dalit Vehe, the Ganav is Chayev Dalit Vehe, Ashaita de Hektish come Chayev It's because of the fact that that moment that he made it Hektish, to have a Mechira, that's considered a Mechira. Hilkach mi boy le lemei maripcha. Therefore, again, it should be the reverse. We should make the reverse distinction between Kachim Shechayev Bachriyusan and Kachim Sheino Chayev Bachriyusan. De Akati lo Nofik Merashus, it still hasn't left his Rishus. Hilkach lav Mechiri, that wouldn't be considered a sale. Ve Atvicha nami lo Mechayev. And again, still you wouldn't be Chayev on Tvicha. You won't be chayiv on the slaughtering. They merchus more common enough because we're always assuming it leaves the rishus of the original owner. And she'ain chayiv b'achrius and chayiv. If it's something that he's not chayiv b'achrius, it should be chayiv. Ashas hektish on the moment of making it hektish the mechiri because that is considered to be a sale. And then the gemara answered amilsa achrisi koi. We're going on something altogether different. The hecha the akdish gan of bein leneder bein lenedava. Meaning, if the gan is the one that made it hektish, it doesn't matter how he made it hektish in terms of whether it was an, a neder and he had responsibility to bring another animal. Should something happened to this animal, or if it was an Adava, that he was just maktish of this animal and he had no responsibility. Lo mechayev Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon would never say chayev in such a case. Lava shayta de hektish, not on the moment that he made it hektish. That's not considered to be a sale. Mishum da dayin shmoalav. It's still considered by his name. Nidvaso shalploni. It's the Nidava of so-and-so, like we said above. It's the carbon of so-and-so. The lava tvichan, also, even if he slaughters it at that point in time, he's not going to be chayev dalit vehei dohamer yashus more kamon nafak. Because again, as we said, it's already left the of the original owner. El Agonev Hektish, rather the case is that what he stole, the animal that he stole was Hektish. Sheikh Dishu Bailam Koy, we're going on a case when the original owner made it Hektish. The Kevin the Chayev Bailam Bachrayas. Now, if the Bailam is Chayev in responsibility, he's responsible for it. Ki Kotavach Demare Kotavach. Then he's slaughtering an animal that belongs to the original owner, and you have to pay Dalit Vehei, the Dover Hagorim Lamamon Kimam and Dami, because then we apply the rule of Dover Hagorim Lamamon Kimam and Dami. But the Gemara continues, Mechdi let us see, Shamin and Leila Rebbe Shimon, we know that Rebbe Shimon holds, the Yomar that he says, Shechita she'en ru'ya lo shma shechita. He says that if you have a shechita that's not fit to eat that from that animal, that's not called a shechita at all. And Rashi says, Shamin and Leila Rebbe Shimon, the Masnisen, meaning the Rebbe Shimon of our Mishnah said, the potter at vichas treifa. He said if he, he, you slaughter an animal that's a treifa, so you can't eat that animal, obviously, that's not called a shechita, and there's no dalit vehei. So if that's the case, kachim nami, then if that's the case, by kachim as well, shechita she'en ru'uyi, isn't it always going to be considered a shechita she'en ru'uyi, and therefore the shechita should never be able to be mechayev, dalit vehei by kachim, for that reason. As Rashi says, kachim nami, shechita she'en ru'uyi, it's a shechita she'en ru'uyi, why? The kachim hanishchot and bechutz pesulim, because if you shecht a carbon outside the base on mikdash, it's disqualified. Umay time with Rabbi Shimon, and if that's the case, what's the reason of Rabbi Shimon? Do yomar kachim she'chayev b'achriyus and chayev, he says that if you have a kachim where there's responsibility, so then he's going to be chayev. The mashmashim gonav kachim v'tavchon to chayev b'tashlomi dalit vehei. That sounds like if he stole kachim that the original owner is chayev b'achrayus and he would slaughter such kachim, there would be dalit vehei. How could there be dalit vehei there? Isn't it a situation of shchita she'ena ruuya? And the Gemara says kiyaser 
Ravdimi Yom Rabbi Yochanan, when Ravdimi came, he said that Rabbi Yochanan said, Bishochet Tamimim Mi Bifnim, Lashem Bailam. What happened over here was, he actually slaughtered the animal, the animal had no blemish, and he, he slaughtered it inside the Beis HaMikdash for the sake of the original owner, and therefore it actually would be a Shechit Ru'uyah, it actually could cause that you're allowed to eat the animal, and that's why there's Dalit Vehei. But the Gemara says to that, but still, Varei Chazra Karen Labailam, but if he's shechting it for the original owner, then it's as if he's already returned the main, that he's returning the principle to the original owner. As Rashi says, Varei Chazra Karen Labal Habayis, Ho'el Ulashem Bailam Nizbuch, if he slaughtered it for the original owner, that's called Chazra Karen Labailam, and there still should not be Dalit Vehei. And the Gemara says, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Barav, and Rabbi Yitzchak Barav says, Shenishba Chadom, the case over here is, is that the, the blood was spilled, the blood was poured out, and Rashi says, Shenishba Chadom, meaning to say that it just spilled out umiu b'shas shchita ru'uya at the moment of shchita it was considered to be a shchita ru'uya but it's not considered to be chaz or karen labaylam it's not considered that it really went back already to the original owner in which case again it's not really a stolen animal it's not considered that because the blood poured out the blood wasn't dealt with appropriately for a carbon and the idea is that if the carbon is not accepted then it's not considered chaz or karen labaylam and the Gemara continues ki asa rav and amar yochanan when raven came he said that yochanan said b'shochet mim b'fnim shalom the case could be where he shechted it without a blemish in the Beis HaMikdash, but it was not shechted for the owner. And Rashi says, and the ru'i, that's still considered a shechita ru'ya. The kaimalam kaz is, kol azvachem shenizbuchu shalolishman k'sherim. If a karman is shechted shalolishman, it's still kosher. The karen lo chazer labaylam, but it's still not considered that the karen, the principal, returned to the original owner. The kaimalam shalol alu labaylam l'shem chova, kaz is, that the that the karman is not considered to be accepted on behalf of the owner for whatever obligation it is, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Ayin Vav Ahmed Bey's